This is the uh, Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. It's one of uh, the most famous books in American history. Um, it used to be required reading for ninth graders in public high schools. However, um, that's no longer the case because of its uh, language, I suppose. But like, it's kind of um, odd when you think about what ninth ninth graders are exposed to now. Um, this would actually um, really help them out. When I first tried to read this book, I was in ninth grade. Um, I was terrible at school at that time. I My brain hadn't developed. Um, me and my twin brother, Michael, we um, didn't have very much uh, parental influence when we were growing up. Um, our mother had schizophrenia. She didn't have custody of us. Our dad, unfortunately, he did have custody, but he was even worse. He was an extremely mean, neglective sociopath. And... Uh, so nobody ever like loved us or took care of us or anything. And if you look at the psychology of that, 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 that tends usually means the uh, individual or individuals in our case um, take longer to uh, progress mentally. Uh, physically, they're uh, you know completely normal at the regular age, but mentally they're not. And so when I read this now, um, I, you know I understand the dialogue and the conversations between Holden and everybody else. Back then it was just like okay. Uh, Who's holding? Uh, who, who's he talking to? Uh, like, what's going on? And then, like, even w when we're, me and my brother would communicate with other people, we would always say, what? And, like, right after what they said, even if we heard what they said, we would always say, what? 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 You know? And uh, I sh I'm going to do a whole other video blog about that on my um, private alias station. Actually, it's not private, but it's not family friendly. So, uh, But I'm going to do a whole thing. But, yeah, we would always answer, what? What? Like, like, like what? Like we needed to repeat again just because our conversation skills weren't up to par. But anyways, this isn't about me. This is about uh, The Catcher in the Rye. Okay. A novel by J.D. Salinger. The Catcher in the Rye. Books by J.D. Salinger. He didn't write very many. The Catcher in the Rye. Nine stories. Franny and Zoe. Raise High the Roof Beam. Carpenters and Seymour. An Introduction. Okay, so I'm familiar with uh, Nine Stories and Franny and Zoe. Um, I uh, haven't read them uh, any time in the last uh, 10 or 15 years. I've uh, went over them once uh, in the year 2000, and it's now 2018. Oh, that, that dates me. Or I can, that's where, insert cliche, because all of a sudden I'm old. But, I'm, you know, that's like whatever, dude, like, I guess you know like with me it was like an overnight thing like people were calling me kid like a couple of days ago now it's just like you're no longer our kid you're old but anyways 18 years since 2000 but yeah you can't go back in time but i guess i have learned a lot all right let's get on with this this book is a work of fiction names characters places and incidents are the product of the author's imagination or used fictitiously any resemblance to actual events, locales, or persons, living or dead, is coincidental. Okay, they say that at the beginning of every book, but in this book, it's not really, it doesn't make sense. If you purchase this book without a cover, you should be aware that the book may have been stolen property and reported as unsold or destroyed to the publisher. In such case, neither the author nor the publisher has received any payment for this stripped book. Wow, that's weird. That's interesting. Um, you know, you want to read the opening page, the, um, I forgot the name of it, the, uh, the title page on, on every book that you read before you read the book so you can see when it was originally published, um, so you can see what period the writer is talking about. Um, anyways, but that's interesting. I guess that was a problem back in the day. People were selling books without the covers on them. Okay. If you purchase this book without a cover, you should be aware that this book may have been stolen property and reported as unsold and destroyed to the publisher. In such case, neither the author nor the publisher has received any payment for this stripped book. So I guess like the books that were damaged, like you can't sell those books. Come on, these books come like they got it's got its head. Salinger's will be pissed. You know? You can't sell it, you know. I guess that was the issue. Copyright, 1945, 1946, and 1951 by J.D. Salinger. That's very rare. He, like, self-published this book, I guess. In 1945. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness gracious. 
45, I was always told it came out in 1951. It says 45, 46, and 51. So 1945, wow, it's so ahead of its time. Like you add 45 years to 1945 and it's only 1990. I remember 1990. But still, that's only 45, that's 45 years on top of that. So, I mean, even 1990, you know, anyways. Copyright, re copyright renewed 1979. All rights reserved. In accordance with the U.S. Copyright Act of 1976, the scanning, uploading, and electronic sharing of any part of this book without the permission of the publisher constitute unlawful piracy or theft of the author's intellectual property. <gasps> okay, now I'm a very good reader, but like, what am I supposed to do? You're, you're not supposed to take a breath until the end of the sentence. You're trying to kill me there now, like a government? If you would like to like, use a comma, you ever heard of and or but? Anyways, if you would like to use material from the book, other than for review purposes, prior written permission must be obtained by contacting the publisher at permissions at hbgusa.com. What? Yeah, right. If you would like to use material from the book, other than for review purposes, Prior written permission must be obtained by contacting the publisher. Thank you for your support of the author's rights. One incident appeared in a different form as a story in Collier's, 1945. One incident appeared in a different form in a New Yorker in 1946. Oh, okay, so this book came out in 1951, but a couple of the pieces of the book were in 1945 and 1946. So that shows that he was working on this book for a mighty long time. If parts of it came out in 45 and 46, you know, and, and if anything, I know what it's like to work on a book for that long. I've, I've worked on my first book for that long. Um, after reading this book recently, you know, I'm reading the first part of the book in chapter one. However, I just recently read the whole book. Um, I only have to do the first few chapters and then the, the YouTube series is complete on this, me reading this book. However, um, um, so you'll get every chapter. You know, this is just an introduction to the entire book. However, after reading the book, um, I read it at the school that I work at for the uh, kids there, for a, a child there that was entering private school, and uh, for a child, a kid, I, I, you know, and I thought it was a really good book, and they really enjoyed it. Uh, however, um, where am I even going with that? Um, like, uh, what was it even? I lost much more thought. I, I'm old. No, um. It's, um, it's elementary, my dear. Uh, it's a really great book. I was thinking about the, 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 the student that I tutor that I introduced this book to because it's going to help them a lot, and I'm really glad of that. Um, uh, well, after reading it, um, you know, I, I understand it a lot more recently, and uh, it, I, mean, I was going to compare it to my own book, and uh, it, it's... Um, very similar. There's a few different instances in my book that happened in his book, and I, I, I give an overall commentary about what I feel in the world on my book, Gonzo Education. Um, it's Gonzo Journalism, so it's, uh, you know, there's a, a first-person narrative where I'm not pretending to be unbiased in any way. I am biased, and uh, I give my viewpoints on the world it's similar to the way Holden does. And then the catch and the rise. So it really did string a chord with me. It left an imprint on me. Not when I first read it and didn't understand it when I was 15 or 16. But when I later read it, when my mind like developed at the age of 21 and 22. And uh, when I saw different like pop culture references and stuff like that. It really did, uh, you know, strike a key. And, and you think about it, I only read it like so long ago before I even started college when I was 21 years old. And so... Uh, and then I write my book now, like 15 years later, and it's like, it's, it's like, wow, I can't believe how similar, like, you know, that, how, how much of an imprint it did leave on me. So, a novel by J.D. Salinger, The Catch in the Right. Uh, to my mother is the dedication. That's something that I also was reminded by um, why dedication um, is the exact same as well in my book. And I didn't know that that was his dedication in this book. I didn't put that in mind or anything. It was just that my book was, um, uh, my, my book is uh, largely based around my mother and her passing and uh, the last year of her life, I should be more specific. 
time and what happened in that year, 2003. So, um, of course, I dedicated the book to her, and she, you know, meant a lot to me as well. Of course, of uh, just about anyone I've ever known besides my brother, of course. Um, so, uh, we're going to get this started here. Um, each chapter is a pretty short. You know, it takes about 10, 15 minutes each chapter. It's uh, 234 pages. Um, that's really like the, about the average size of book, double space, 240 page, 230, 240 pages. Uh, my book's 235 pages, so my book is uh, one page longer than this book. Um, fiction, Little Brown. All right, so. Be reading this, I really do enjoy this. I guess if you ask what my favorite book is, I would say it's Catching the Rat. Um, this series on this uh, YouTube channel, I'm going to be reading a few different books. Um, however, uh, the first one I start with is this one. I'm uh, keeping this channel family friendly, um, so there's not much cursing, there's not any cursing, and there's not uh, any uh, cursing. Or I shouldn't say there's any cursing or foul language coming from myself. Um, I can't guarantee that everything in the book will have uh, 100%. There won't be any, any curse words or anything like that. There's actually a, a curse word in here. Um, uh, the F word is in here. But instead of saying, um, you know, F you, I say uh, frick you. So, you know, it's it only comes up a few times at the very end of the novel. And uh, instead of uh, going and editing out, I just say frick you. So, I'm just waiting for this to end. Why am I waiting for this to end? Okay, that's it. 